Holy Spirit would invite you in. Move in each of our hearts to be more like you. Thank you for your love and grace as you take all of us broken as every one of us are. Imperfect, messed up, sinful, yet seeking your love and grace. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you the praise today. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm old, so I get a chair. <laughs> okay, we're going to be reading from John 17 this morning. And I've got my Bible as backup just in case, but I've got it on my phone. Everybody's got a, any, anybody that's got a phone, I'll give you a minute to look it up. And we're going to be reading verses 6 through 26. And this is Jesus praying to his Father. I'm looking. On my phone, it's in a, and I'll read slow in case other people have other versions. Okay, this is Jesus praying to his Father, God in heaven. I have revealed you to those whom you give me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I give them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you came me. I pray them for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you gave me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be with, so they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that Scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I see these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more that I am of this world. My prayer is that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them. My prayer is that you not take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have given to me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Bless his word.
Lord God, get me out of the way. Get me out of the way of the work you want to do this morning. Move out my agenda. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to transform our hearts, to transform our minds, to be moved by your Holy Spirit. We lift our hearts to you this morning. We want to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you have heard of Asbury College or University? How many of you heard about it before two weeks ago? Before two weeks ago? I, was that you who put the Ecthus picture up? No, that was my But, okay, same person in your group. Yeah. So is that where you guys stayed when you went to Ecthus? Did you, you guys, you guys were wild. Wow, that's awesome. We, we were wimps. We stayed at a church like five miles away. <laughs> then we'd go and play in the mud. Um, Asbury College, there's something huge happening there. There's skeptics about what's happening there. And generally, I by nature am a skeptic to what happens with planned out, orchestrated, Revivals. I've been to plenty of revival meetings where people say, come to this revival meeting, and I end up going to a very nice worship service, which is nothing wrong with that. But to me, you can't orchestrate stuff like this. You cannot make it up. You cannot pretend it. You cannot try to, to, to create it and make it happen. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit do I believe that happens, and it is happening at Asbury College right now as we speak. You know why? Do you know why I think that's real? Because they didn't advertise, hey, come see us, we're going to do a revival service. They did not do that. What happened was is they started off with a normal chapel service, and then the Holy Spirit just exploded all over the place. And more and more people are coming to this moment, this day. They're still lining up to be down. I want to go. I was like, I got a meeting this weekend. I can't go. Right? I want to go. I want to drive down to Wilmore, Kentucky. Just for a moment of experiencing how the Holy Spirit is running. But guess what? You don't even have to drive that far. Do you know what? This is spreading to other schools. I know for a fact, who's heard of Cedarville University? Anybody? Cedarville? Okay. A couple of you. Cedarville's another. Christian College. And guess what? I know specifically of some students who want to come up here to MSU and minister to the families and the kids and the students who are suffering from the shootings of last week. Praise the Lord. We are seeing transformation happening all over this country right now. And it's spreading. And I am praying for that. I am praying for revival in our communities. I am not going to try to create it and make it happen. I can't. I cannot fake it. And there is a generation right now in college that the Holy Spirit is grabbing a hold of their hearts and transforming them. And when I've been preaching for the last several weeks about be transformed by the renewing of your mind, be transformed by the Word, be transformed by the Holy Spirit, let yourself be transformed. It's not what I'm telling you. Go to the Word. It's telling you. It's speaking to our hearts. It's coming to life. I've been praying all week long and asking God, I go, what do you want me to do? Do you know what he said? Don't write a sermon. I said, you've got to be kidding me. God knows what he wants us to hear today. God knows what 
you want what you need to hear today. I don't know what he wants you to hear. I don't know what you need to hear. I've been praying through this prayer and thinking about what God spoke to Jesus himself in that garden. Last week we talked about remaining in the vine, being connected to the vine. That's just two chapters before this one. And Jesus is saying, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Remain in the vine. When you break away, what happens? You get cut off and thrown into the fire. If you're not producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, and we don't always do that, I admit. But that should be our heart's desire. To produce that. To live it. To apply it. The biggest question, the best, my, it's become my, I, my favorite question. What does this all have to do with me? I love that question. I hated it the first time I heard it. I go, oh, what do you mean, what does it have to do with you? Because we want to know how we can connect to what God is speaking into our lives right now. Every single person sitting here, you are here because God wanted you here in this moment, right here, right now. And if you ask me why, I'm going to go, I don't know. Maybe because God loves you. Maybe because... Because he wants to speak into your life. Maybe because there's something from his word that's going to strike your heart. I don't know. I don't know your story. I don't know everybody's story. I don't know what you've been through. But guess who does know? God knows exactly what you've been through. He knows what you've put yourself through. He knows our darkest, dirtiest secret. He knows it. We cannot hide it from him. And he says, I love you. There's, there's hope. I was thinking about this prayer all week and going, I must have it all just typed out. I must have a form. And God says, no. I go, I, I, I went back and forth. You can ask Rachel. I go, I'm feeling really vulnerable, Lord. And usually that's when he does his best work. That's when he speaks into each of our hearts and says the exact thing. This is not a drawn out three point. I know exactly every single point and pre and sub points and all that mess. Not today. Not today. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. I've been saying this verse over and over all week long in different situations, in different conversations, in different moments, and he keeps saying, quit leaning on what you know. Quit leaning on your own understanding, and in all your ways, acknowledge me. So that means we got this big meeting coming up, right? In that... Acknowledge me. Acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. There's a reason you, you're sitting in the pew today. There is a reason. God drew you in. And he is going to get the glory today. I'm going to back up a little bit from what Jerry read, and I'm going to read the opening verses. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has now come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. All the stuff we do, all the stuff we say, all the stuff that we 
work through and deal with and wrestle with and argue about the most important thing. We were even talking about end times in Revelation. I still say the most important thing is that you know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Those are the most important things that any of us in this room or out of this room, because I know we got people running around back getting ready for, for us, can ever have. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. To know him. And when I say to know him, it's not just knowing about him, but it's spending time with him. Remember what we talked about, how easy it is to get busy doing things for God that we're not spending time with God. He wants to know you. Verse 9. It says this. Next slide. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. So Jesus is starting off praying specifically for believers. He's praying for them because God gave him the believers. The, the, anybody who is, is choosing to follow Jesus with their life belong to Jesus. Uh, he says, I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world at the moment. Now, he's not saying I will never pray for the world. He does. But right now, he's getting real specific. I'm praying for the believers. Jesus prayed for each one of us in here. He was praying for his disciples specifically at the time. That they would be encouraged because he knew that they were about to face a storm without him physically being there. This would be the first time his disciples would have to face the world without Jesus physically being there. He said, I'm praying for them. Because you gave them to me, Father. They're yours. Everyone who belongs to Jesus belongs to God the Father. And Jesus says, I am glorified in them. He's no longer part of the world at this point. He's already, you can tell Jesus is already starting to check out. And it's not, when I say check out, it doesn't mean, oh, see ya, hasta la vista. But he's preparing for the next stage. And what's what, do you, does anybody know what happens after he, he's done with this prayer? Yeah, he gets arrested. Guess who shows up? His old buddy Judas with the, with the soldiers to arrest him. And all we know what happens after that. And if you don't, Stick around for Easter time. We'll talk a lot about it. Right? So, let's look at verse 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. God's word is the truth. This world will tell you there's all kinds of truth. My truth is your truth. Your truth eh, might not be your, your truth. Eh, it's all relative, right? What is truth anyway, right? No. Wrong. In fact, earlier we know that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Notice, if you were to read these in order, that they all build upon each other. They're all connected. That connects us to being connected to the vine. That means we need to be connected to Jesus. That means if we're connected to Jesus, that's how we're connected to the Father. So how do we do that? We spend time in His Word. We spend time worshiping Him. We spend time singing and praising Him 
and praying and talking to him. And <clears throat> here's the hard one. We also need to spend time listening to him. Preachers are we're good talkers. We talk a lot. But we also need to learn to listen. As James, his little brother, later on tells us, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. I, I really should have it tattooed to my forearm and walk around like this. Because I'm often quick to spout off quick to get angry and slow to listen. And God says, no, this is what I want. I'm not done with you. I'm still working on you. And hallelujah indeed to that, because that means we have hope. Verse 20. And 21 says this. I do not ask for these only, though, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Ah, does that sound familiar? For God so loved the world, okay, that they may believe that you have sent me. See the connection? It's all here in the book of John. That's why I often will send new readers of Scripture straight to John, because John has such a way of sharing the gospel and the good news with people. And it connects. It intertwines itself. It is the truth. He says, your word is truth. I want people, the world, to believe. He didn't say, I want all the good little Christians to believe. He didn't say, I want all of those who dress properly. He says, I want the world to believe that you've sent me. That they sent, that God sent Jesus. Verse 23. I and them and you and me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you loved me. He's, uh, he's repeating himself. Remember, if, you're not a, if you haven't read Scripture much, the Bible does repeat itself a lot. There's purpose in repeating. He wants us to get this. He wants to hammer it into our heads, into our mind, into our heart, into our hands, head, heart, hands. We talked about that a few weeks ago, putting it into action. They may be perfectly one. That means all of us, all of our different personalities, all of our different backgrounds, perfectly one in Christ Jesus. He is the one thing that connects us all. No matter your demographic, doesn't matter, rich, poor, in between, all of that. He wants us to be one. He wants us to be unified. He wants us to be connected. One of the most beautiful things about this church that, and it started, I'm sure, even maybe even before Marvin was here. But is that this church has been known to be able to disagree with each other without being disagreeable. That was one thing that was always, remi people reminded me of that. And I said, you know, that's, that's fantastic. We need to keep that. 
you don't have to agree with everything I do or say. Now call me out if it's going against Scripture. Yeah, that's called accountability. But we don't, not everybody's going to see eye to eye on everything. And that's okay. That's okay. We are still connected to the vine because Jesus is the vine. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the one who helps us become perfectly one. That the world may know that you sent me and loved me, loved them even as you love me. That means God loves you. God the Father loves every single one of you the same way that he loves Jesus Christ. And Jesus and God are one because they are both God. I know, that's hard to wrap your mind around. It's the Trinity thing. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You need all three. All three are one. Kids' favorite song. One of the kids' favorite songs is, uh, My God. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. And there's a line in there. It goes, one plus one plus one equals one. Boom! Beyond logic. But thank you, my mathematicians back there. I appreciate you too. Amen. <laughs> yes. But in God's mind, God, one plus one plus one is one. God the Father, God the Spirit, or God the Son, God the Spirit. One. But I love the fact that he is praying for people who will believe someday. Maybe you're sitting in the pew right now and you don't believe yet. I'm glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. You might be sitting in the pew and you, you, you haven't bought into this yet. That's okay. I'm so glad you're here. The moment you accept what God's word is telling you, it's going to start making sense. Because one plus one plus one equals one does not make logical sense. But if you know the power of God and the Holy Spirit, it makes perfect sense. You'll get there. It's a journey. Be patient in the process. Next slide. Verse 26. I made known to them your name. I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. What does that mean? That means we need to love one another. Yes. Ooh, I love the Amplified. Thank you for sharing that. That Say that last part again. The love which you have loved me may be in them overwhelming your heart. That's not a mic drop. I don't know what is. It's going to overwhelm your heart. It will transform you from the inside. You will not be the same person you were before. And if you still feel like you're the same, then you need to go back to Him and say, Lord, what are, you, what are you trying to do in me? What are you trying to work in me? He will transform you from the inside. You will not be the same person you once were. I preached on this a couple weeks ago too. That's why Jesus, who did Jesus hang out with? Did he hang out with the religious people all the time? No. He was hanging out with the, with the prostitutes. He was hanging out with the tax collectors who at that time were really hated people because they were thought of as traitors to their own kind. Working for Rome. How dare you? 
I'm going to sit with that person. And Jesus said, yep. He might have not said yep. But, <laughs> but he did say yes. Yes, we will. You're eating and drinking with sinners? Yep. Yes, I am. What would that look like today? That means everybody. He's inviting everybody in. He's not going to let you stay the same, though, because you will be transformed. Let the Holy Spirit transform you. As you and if you question what I'm saying, go to the book of John. It's not me. See for yourself. See for yourself what God is, is telling you. It's not what I'm saying. It's what he's saying. And this is an invitation to you. If this has moved in your heart and you haven't made that commitment yet, I invite you to come forward. I invite you to join me. I'll pray with you. I'll take you through it. If you're not comfortable coming up front, see me at the end. Call me up during the week. Text me. My phone's on 24-7. If I don't answer, I'll call you back. Leave a message, though. If you don't leave a message, I don't know how important it really is. But I will try to always call back. He wants to get your whole heart. It's an invitation to it. I'm not gonna, I can't force it on you. And he will not force himself on you. It's an invitation. You know what he kept saying to his disciples when they come and ask him what, what he's up to and what he's doing? You know what he said? Come, follow me. I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I invite you, come, follow him. Dive into his word. There's four books in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that tell Jesus' story in detail. Come check it out. It's really cool. And you'll be amazed what it'll do when you let it change you on the inside. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please stand and sing with us as we sing our closing song.
fine meal made by many, many hands and hang out with us for our meeting afterwards. I'll pray for the food in there when we get in there. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.